In this video tutorial, we will demonstrate how to use the Impulse Response Module in Audio Tools or Room Impulse Response application to make gated outdoor measurements of loudspeakers. This demonstration will be in Audio Tools, but the process will be the same in the standalone Room Impulse Response application. Often when designing and testing speakers, it is important to know the frequency response of just the loudspeaker. Normally loudspeaker measurements taken in a room are distorted by the presence of room reflections, reverberation, or room modes. The best way to measure just the frequency response of a loudspeaker is to take the measurement in an anechoic chamber. Since most individuals do not have access to one, there is an easy method to make quasi-anechoic measurements of loudspeakers by using a gated outdoor measurement technique. The basic idea is that you want to position the loudspeaker outside and elevate it as high as practical in order to be able to measure just the direct sound from the speaker and gate or fade out the late reflections. First bring your loudspeaker outside and suspend it at least six feet in the air. A PA speaker stand with a piece of plywood attached to the top is ideal, but anything will work, like the ironing board I've used here. Next make sure that your speakers are as far as possible from any reflecting surfaces such as walls or buildings. Position your microphone on the same axis as the speaker and about 6 feet away. Now we are ready to take the measurement. I'm now in the Impulse Response module of Audio Tools. If you are new to Impulse Response, you will find it in the Acoustics section of the software. For this measurement, I am using the iAudio Interface 2. I have my microphone connected to the microphone in, and the line output connected to a battery-powered Class D amplifier, which is attached to the full-range speaker that I aim to measure today. To start, I'll tap the sine wave icon to bring up the recording screen. I'm going to use the 7-second sweep with an expected maximum reverb time of 2 seconds. Now we will measure the IR by tapping the record button. For this type of analysis, I like to use dual mode on the iPad and have the ETC plot on the bottom and the FFT plot on the top. With the presence of the full impulse response with reflections, you can see the unsmooth response is very jagged and does not really represent what the loudspeaker is actually doing. I'll zoom into the ETC plot and I can see the first reflection, which happens to be the reflection off the ground, is coming in at about 6 milliseconds after the onset of the direct sound. For the final analysis, I will want to just focus on the first part of the IR before the first reflection. I'll use a technique known as windowing or gating to accomplish this. First, let's set the left window. I'll drag my cursor right before the IR starts. To set the windows, I'll tap the wrench icon. We offer many different types of windows, but for this demo, I will select the 2 key 0.25 a half cosine window that's duration is 25% of the total window's duration. To set the left window, I'll tap the Set from Cursor text. You can see it changed to 12.3 milliseconds. This is 12.3 milliseconds before the onset of the direct sound, which is normalized to 0 milliseconds. Since I know that the first reflection is at 6 milliseconds, I'll set the right window right before that, 5.9 milliseconds. Then I will turn on the Enable Windowing switch to perform the analysis. The window will be drawn in blue over the ETC analysis. This corresponds to the amplitude envelope of the window. Impulse Response will display anything out of the window in a faded yellow color. Let's look at our FFT analysis. The response is much smoother and much closer to the actual frequency response of the speaker on my open baffle. Nothing in life is free though, and the one consequence that there is when employing this gating technique is that you are not able to accurately measure low frequencies. The FFT resolution is in the upper right hand corner and it shows the width of each FFT bin, in our case close to 60 Hz, which explains the blocky look of frequencies under 500 Hz. Since I plan on using this speaker for mid-range frequencies only, from 500 to 4 kHz, my measurement arrangement will be okay.
If we wish to measure low frequencies, we will have to use more advanced techniques such as response blending or combining measured results with a model. This is an advanced topic that will be covered in a later tutorial. Now that we are happy with the response, we can enter the Save Recall screen by tapping the folder icon, giving this measurement a name and saving. Since I have Dropbox Sync set up in Audio Tools, these results will automatically be saved to my shared Dropbox folder for post-processing, further analysis, or working with third-party tools for speaker or crossover design and modeling.